Welcome back. This is Bruce McConnell with Locomotive Systems Training. Uh, we're still in the air brake circuit, so we'll jump right in. Once again, air brake circuits. This time we're going to talk about the next step in line from Equalizer Reservoir. It's called the brake pipe system, and this is LSTV-041. All right, now, before we get going, remember, all air is created from main reservoir. All air. No matter what it's used for, no matter what type. Does it change colors? Yeah. Does it change functions? Yes. And the reason we change colors is because we change functions, it allows us to better understand the, uh, the air brake circuit. All right, just a quick review. Uh, here's all the players in the game. Same thing. Remember, everything's in the dashed line. is all the contents of the automatic brake valve, 26 the automatic brake valve, the P2A brake application valve, a 220 cubic inch volume reservoir, and an equalizing reservoir gauge. All right. Those are the players in the equalizing reservoir circuit. Now, I have to go back, and I've done this before, but I'm going to do it again. There's a reason why we have this short circuit of approximately 26 feet from beginning to end. And that's because back in 1869, yep, I'm going way back then, um, they came up with an air brake system it's called the straight air, straight air brake system. And it consisted of a steam compressor, air compressor, and it had a tank, and then it had a three-way valve, and then it had a brake cylinder. The problem, I mean, it, it certainly got all the brakemen off the uh, tops of all the boxcars, uh, because that, at best it was dangerous, and at worst it was fatal. So, um... The cool part was got them down in a safe place, but the problem was it, it, it was very non-uniform. The engineer had to keep one eye on the, on the air gauges, plus one guy on the, on the train, the right of way and all that. So it was, it was a handful, to say the least. Anyway, every time the engineer would move that, that three-way valve, and he would apply the brakes, well, uh, it's what they call a serpentine effect. The air would go through all these different bends and turns and pipes and hoses and all this stuff. So by the time the air got to the end of that last, or then, back in then, a caboose, the air would literally ricochet back and turn it back over the way, and it would literally uh, release or knock off the brakes on the components that just applied. Uh, so without getting into depth about triple valves and all that, you're just gonna have to trust me. Anyway, so it had a serpentine effect and it made the, the air very, I don't wanna say uncontrollable, but very difficult to control. So. Along came this little circuit called the Equalizing Reservoir Circuit. You'll notice that it has a notched knob to adjust, and we set this at 90 PSI and then we leave it alone. We don't touch it no more. Okay? That 90 PSI comes from main reservoir, regulates down, comes down pipe 15 through the P2A, goes back up into this 220 cubic inch volume reservoir, goes over to this 90 PSI Equalizing Reservoir gauge, it goes up into the relay valve and stops there. All right. Now, you'll notice on the relay valve there is no knob, there is no adjustment. And the reason for that is this relay valve is pneumatically controlled by the equalizing reservoir circuit. Okay? A lot of people say, oh, you yeah, know, this one's adjustable. No. The adjustment knob's on the regulating valve, not on the relay valve. Okay? Now, so with 90 PSI, as I'm showing here, the automatic brake valve handle is in the release position. Of course, you're showing it charging, and that's okay because um, I just want to make sure there's been 90 pounds in here. Now, so when it's fully charged, the arrows would stop. They would turn into T's. That's why I'm showing you that. This would be at 90. I'd have dark green air here, just like we got going here. All right, let's go to the next slide here. So here we have. All the components of the equalizing reservoir circuit is shown above and it's shown charging here. But yet, I, the reason I left these T's instead of arrows, I'm showing 90 pounds both an equalizing or an equalizing reservoir here. Okay, so these are the players, total of four, 26 C automatic brake valve, P2A brake application valve, 220 cubic inch volume reservoir, and a 90 PSI ER gauge. Those are the players. Now, let's go to the next one and let's take a look. This is what we've seen from the last video. We see dark green air flowing from main reservoir in the regulating valve going down pipe 15 into the P2A is pipe coming out as pipe 5, which is control pipe. Remember, 15 pipe is the ER charging pipe. Pipe 5 is the ER control pipe, which means we're going to control something. Comes up, comes over, ends at the relay valve. Now, in the relay valve, there's a great big diaphragm here. And what it's going to do is I start building pressure that diaphragm is going to shove to the right, which is going to open this main reservoir line here, 
and now I'm going to have main reservoir flow and it's going to go, go from red to orange. Orange air in our diagrammatics is brake pipe. Now, I'm going to change the way, a whole way of thinking about a freight train that's tootling down the tracks. Watch a freight train as it goes by and you'll see a hose between each car. Okay, the entire length of the train all the way down the train. That hose that you're seeing, ladies and gentlemen, is brake pipe. Now that locomotive tooling down the track with the automatic brake valve handle and release, there's 90 pounds of air in that hose. From that lead locomotive to that 150th car, that's orange air going through every car and every locomotive up to the lead locomotive. And from the lead locomotive back to that 150th car is orange air. And if, like I said, if my automatic brake valve handle is in the release and recharge, I will have 90 pounds of air. Now, that brake pipe air, ladies and gentlemen, is an air signal, okay? And what it's doing, it's from the lead locomotive only, it's gonna send that air signal out for every locomotive and trail and every Bosch car in that train to do something, whether they want to apply brakes or release brakes, that air signal is all controlled by brake pipe, okay? So, we now know that equalizing reservoir goes in the relay valve, shove the diaphragm over and open a supply valve in the relay valve of the automatic brake valve, Red air turns into orange air, goes down to the brake pipe cutoff valve, which is used in emergencies, and a number and a vent valve, which is used in emergency, comes out of the automatic, goes down, and goes to our brake pipe system. Now, <clears throat> uh, one thing that uh, I want to mention, it says here, why are the arrows here, or why are all the arrows missing? Because when the system is fully charged to 90 pounds, there is no more flow. They'll be shut off, may reservoir be shut off, I'd have 90 pounds in equalizing, I'd have 90 pounds in brake pipe, and no more air will flow until the engineer asks for a reduction or brake application. You can use the term reduction and brake application in the same sentence. It means one and the same. So whether you choose reduction or service rate application, it's fine. You're, you're going to get brakes. So now, let's get this straight. This will charge a minimum of five minutes, some railroads will go ten, okay? Fire up the locomotive, we charge everything up. The first air in that locomotive is main reservoir air, tapped off here and here. With the automatic brake valve handle release and recharge, we will charge equalizing reservoir from main reservoir up to 90 pounds, also over to here to 90 pounds. At the same time, we're gonna be, at the same time, we're gonna be bu building up brake pipe pressure. And let's say it's a single locomotive, just for real sim simplicity. We'll take main reservoir, it'll flow in because the diaphragm moved to the right. Main reservoir flows into the brake pipe circuit starting at the relay valve. It will go down to the brake pipe cutoff valve located inside the automatic. The vent valve located inside the automatic, down, out pipe one, and through the entire brake pipe system of that locomotive. Now, as it is so you know, when equalizing reservoir has a few pounds in it, brake pipe will have. So my two fingers are going to be equalizing reservoir here as you're sitting in the seat looking at them. Equalizing reservoir is here, brake pipe is here. So when equalizing moves up, brake pipe moves up, and they move up just like that. Okay, all the way up from, from zero, all the way up to 90. They move in unison. But equalizing reservoir is the boss. Brake pipe doesn't do anything until equalizing reservoir does it first. That's why the dark green air is the boss. Equalizing reservoir is the boss of that locomotive. Brake pipe always follows equalizing except in emergency, which is a whole different thing way down the line, okay? So when equalizing moves five pounds, brake pipe goes up five pounds. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So they literally start and they literally go up in unison like that. This one doesn't go up and then this one go up. No, no, no. They go up and down in a timely fashion. And equalizing always starts the action first. All right, so there we have the, the main reservoir in. Equalizing reservoir circuit, we now know what it does. It controls, and here's the cool part. This brake pipe can literally go from the lead locomotive, and if I've got, say, a, 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 a 5,000 foot long train, which is a, about a mile long, or even a mile and a half, or even two miles long, that's the signal coming out of the lead locomotive going to that last 200th car, or 150th car, or, or 100 cars, or whatever, whatever the makeup of that train is. We now know that that hose going from car to car to car to car, to that, last or that last car, excuse me, is this orange air. It'll be charging 90 pounds on a freight locomotive. 
All right, so there we have it. The equalizing reservoir circuit is really, really important because that little 26-foot circuit literally is controlling that mile, mile and a half, two mile long train of cars. Pretty amazing stuff, isn't it? So that equalizing reservoir circuit is very, 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 very important. Okay, let's go to the next slide, please. And again, let's take a look at the 26 e automatic brake valve. This is a review from a long time ago, so I wanted to put this in or just so as a little reminder. The 26 e automatic brake valve is initiating a valve. It's, it starts an action. This valve initiates application releases of both locomotive brakes and train brakes by controlling what? There it is. Equalizing reservoir pressure, which in results in controlling brake pipe pressure increases or decreases. Now let me stop there for a moment. If I grab hold of this handle, and my two gauges read 90 pounds of equalizing and 90 pounds of brake pipe, and I move this handle, the first air that's going to move or vent out of that automatic brake valve is equalizing reservoir. Yep, that's right. And momentarily after that, the next air that's going to vent out of the automatic brake valve will be orange air. They will do it almost virtually in unison. But always remember, equalizing always starts first. Will it make a reduction or an increase? Okay? Remember, equalizing reservoir is the controlling pressure. All right, so here's the thing. We now know that when I move this handle and I move it into the application zone, which means going from left to right, I'm going to take equalizing, it was that how much pressure? Initially, 90 pounds, and I'm going to reduce it. That's right, you heard me, we're going to reduce it. We're going to go from, let's say we make a 10 pound reduction of equalizing. We're going to go from 90 PSI down to 80 of equalizing. And at the same time, because equalizing moves first, brake pipe moves second, they will almost virtually move at the same rate. So equalizing brake pipe, we're going to go from 90 PSI down to 80 in unison. Which means all the air in the brake pipe from that lead locomotive to that last car is now at 80 PSI. It doesn't happen just that fast because if I got a mile and a half or a mile long of freight trains, it's going to take a little bit of time to get that 10 pounds off of each car, out to that, each, each lo trading locomotive, out of that lead locomotive and under the cab floor. That's a, not much pressure, but it's a huge amount of volume. So it takes a little, a little bit of time. Okay? So this is the guy that controls the brakes on the, the locomotives and the train. All right, let's go to the next one. Control valve. We mentioned this way back. I don't even know what video it was, but a few back. The control valve. This is a responding valve. This valve is using the automatic brake circuit. Remember the 26C automatic brake valve just a moment ago? That guy is the boss of these three components. Okay? The automatic brake valve, ladies and gentlemen, is the boss of this valve. This valve does absolutely nothing until the automatic brake tells him to. And he does that by way of reductions and increases of brake pipe. Which, by the way, is caused by reductions or increases in equalizing reservoir first. All right. This valve is in the automatic brake circuit. It consists of three components. The pipe bracket, which is this great big chunk of metal here that's literally mounted to the underside of the cab floor. Uh, in almost my 40 years of uh, railroading, I've never seen one of those change out. But I'm sure it has been somewhere in the world, but I've never seen it. It's a pretty reliable, pretty reliable component. No moving parts. It, does, it serves two purposes. Inside there's a 40 cubic inch volume tank, which we use for quick service volume, which we'll talk about way, 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 way later. And also it so provides as a mounting bracket for the 26F service portion and also the quick release valve. So all three pieces, the pipe bracket, this 26F service portion and the 26F quick release all make up the 26F control valve. Remember, this is the guy that's going to provide the brake application on my lead locomotive and all my trailing locomotives and all the cars in my freight train will have a valve not identical to this but something very, very similar to that. Okay? All right, let's move on to the next one. Double check valve. This valve permits the directional control of a device from two different air sources without interaction between the air sources, whichever pressure is greater. Okay, you ever watch a ping pong match or a badminton match or a tennis match? Well, what we have here is a double check valve. It's an, 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 what they call, a, there's two types of check valves. They're called a bias valve, which has a spring in it, and a non-bias, which has no spring. Well, the 2016 double check valve is a non-bias valve, there's no spring. So this guy will move either way of whichever pressure is pushing it, whichever pressure is greater. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit more. Okay, so that's that double check valve. Remember, that was, that's a player in the game. Okay, let's go on a little more. 
the J relay valve. This guy right here, located underneath the cab floor, there's a responding type valve responds to an air signal from either the independent circuit, pipe 20, or automatic circuit, pipe 16, that provides a large volume of air. Main reservoir air, how much was that? 130, 140. Uh, to the brake cylinders, the diaphragm or diaphragms contained inside the valve determine the output of air to the brake cylinders. This guy does one job and one job only. He will actually two. I'm taking it back. He creates a brake cylinder and sends the air signal out to the brake cylinders. This guy also vents the air from the brake cylinders and the exhaust here. And see, a lot of people think that when I move the automatic brake valve handle, that a signal from the automatic brake valve handle goes down to all the brake cylinders and fills up all the brake cylinders from the automatic brake valve. Absolutely wrong, not true, completely incorrect, eh, wrong answer. This guy, this guy responds to either a pipe 20 air signal, which would be the independent circuit, or pipe 16, which is the automatic circuit, and then he takes that input signal and sends out the appropriate air pressures to the brake cylinders. And usually, usually, most locomotives have eight brake cylinders, the four per truck, and with 140, 140 psi, right here, look at the top of that valve being piloted by these diaphragms, can really fill brake cylinders up real quick, and that's why we have that large volume of air in there to accomplish that job. Envision trying to fill up eight brake cylinders with a three-eighths pipe; you'd be there quite a while. But with this guy and a, and a rather large opening, can fill up those brake cylinders real quick. Hence the term J relay valve. Okay? All right, let's go to the next one. Oh, that's it. So anyway, so last video, we're talking about the main reservoir circuit a little bit. Then we discussed the equalized reservoir circuit. This one we delved a little bit further. We took the equalized reservoir circuit and expanded what his job is to do, and that is to create brake pipe. Not only to create brake pipe, but also to control it. When we make a reduction of equalizing, we make a reduction of brake pipe. We make a reduction of brake pipe that's felt throughout the locomotive and consist of locomotives and train. And then we reduce brake pipe, say from 90 PSI down to 80 or 70. Each control valve will sense that loss of brake pipe and it will create a signal that will go down to the J relay valve and apply brakes on the lead locomotive, training locomotive, and the rest of the cars. So, whew, a lot of stuff to talk about. Kind of really cool stuff. So uh, again, if you have any questions, please give us a call or email us. There's our web address, www.lst-ca.com. Once again, www.lst-ca.com. Thanks for watching and have a safe day.